So being an MLW is kind of the cherry on top of, uh, of my career. And um, it, it's nice to be still be involved in the game while it's getting this popularity. And I never yeah. imagined when I first started playing in 2010 that I'd be playing in Citizens Bank Park. I'd be in Oklahoma. Like, it's crazy. Signing autographs for people. Um, I played actually this summer too. ESPN 8, um, the Ocho Day. They have pillow fighting, cornhole, I just did. a whole day dedicated yeah. to that. I, I They had wiffle ball on at 4 p.m. I played in that wiffle ball game on ESPN. So um, that was that felt just pretty great because my whole life I had been always kind of got the vibe. Wiffle ball is dumb. You're wasting your time. Like parents, my a lot of people close to me weren't very big supporters. So to be able to call them and be like, hey, guys, um, August 13th on ESPN2 at 4 o'clock, you're going to want to turn on the TV because I'm going to be playing. Uh, that felt great to tell people, you know. Um, yeah. So just an awesome experience. It's good to, to see <laughs> and be a part of with ball and ESPN. Hey, remember when we talked like four or ten years ago and you said you should yeah. give up? There was a lot of receipts. Turn on ESPN2 real quick. I've got something <laughs> yeah. to tell you. <laughs> a lot of receipts that I had when ML, I, I've told the story at MLW. When they finally started selling my jersey, I have lost so many relationships due to wiffle ball. And I, I don't care, justifiably. I, I'd rather play with than, you know. And if me being passionate about a hobby is an issue, you know, shouldn't be with that person overall. But anyways, don't the love advice. But uh, a lot of people that, you know, just talk crap about it, I'd send a link to my jersey. And uh, I'd say, hey, please, uh, you know, I got my jersey on sale. Um, thirty five ninety nine on blocking fee. Um, so, yeah, it's, it was nice to send those receipts out. Yeah, I mean, honestly, if you're trying to do something and something like that's not a secure thing, right? Like there's a lot of secure things you could do. You're trying yes. to go outside the box. If you don't have receipts at the end of the day, then then no. you're probably not <laughs> trying hard enough at yeah. it. You really um, are. So yeah. I, I get that. I get that completely. Yeah. That's awesome. <clears throat> I did see you on ESPN. I believe I was working that day. Is there is there a place – like do you have that saved somewhere? Like do you have that game saved? That's my first question. My second question yeah. is how would you do in the game? Um, so thankfully my girlfriend has a DVR, so she recorded it. I, I don't know if it's on YouTube. Um, did pretty well. Pitched two innings, gave up two hits, one run, um, got walked once. We are on an hour time limit, so we are kind of just like as rapid, as fastly paced as we can go. Um, we were kind of playing, but – it was cool. I got to start on ESPN. Um, struck some people out through a nice changeup, and um, I just couldn't believe it. I did a segment with um, a co- I, I should remember. I should know the guy's name. Um, a college football analyst. Okay. Lee Cor- not not no not Lee Corso. I, I know <laughs> Lee Corso. Yeah. Lee Corso. Um, yeah. I I forget his name, but anyways. Well, um, Chris Fowler. Pretty cool pitching to him. Fowler's on there. Uh, Kirk sure. Street. He was an ACC guy. Um, my friend Toast from Georgia was there that day. He knew him. He's a big Georgia Bulldogs fan. So he was like, ACC football ain't nothing. It was pretty funny <laughs> to see that. The South loves college football. Yeah, But um, it was awesome, you know, like be on TV. Never would have imagined. 